Every product on the screen is a result of forced child labor, not in third world countries, but in cities as close as two hours from us. I know it's not often that we stop to think about where our fruits and vegetables come from, but that's because we don't have to. For as long as we have been alive, we have been exposed to these products. These are our commodities, things that we have come to expect to be available to us, often at very low costs. Today I want to talk to you about the child labor in the food industry, particularly in the ag agricultural fields, and why I think you should choose to purchase fair trade products or shop locally. Uh, I have been volunteering for, uh, with a, a number of organizations for years now and have been able to experience firsthand the impact that our conscious purchases have on these small-scale farmers. So let's start off by um, answering who is working these fields. According to Norma Flores Lopez, the director of Children in the Fields campaign, there are around 400,000 to 500,000 children working in these fields. And this number is very underestimated because the government isn't doing much to collect data on underage kids who work these, type, these types of jobs. Uh, these kids are as young as five, six, seven years old, all the way to 17 years old. The working conditions that these kids have to endure are a complete nightmare. According to international labor organizations, Children are exposed to many hazards, such as sharp tools, uh, heavy machinery. They have to endure extreme temperatures. They also risk having to carry heavy loads for their bodies that aren't able to handle the kind of weight for them. Children rarely wear protective gear, which means that they are exposed to skin disorders and infections. They are exposed to animal bites and stings. They uh, risk getting cuts and wounds. They risk being exposed to poison and chemicals and other uh, po chemicals from the poison and pesticides. The physical strains and repetitive movements that these children have to deal with are, are detrimental to their bodies that the agricultural tasks require. Um, all these can deform bones or injure ligaments and muscles in the body, causing lifelong disabilities, especially in younger kids whose bodies still haven't been fully developed. Most of these children are actually working as unpaid labor because they are working to assist their parents. They're not working to get a pay for themselves. They're working so that their families can meet a quota. A lot of the work that these children do actually goes unacknowledged or completely ignored. So why isn't anyone doing this? Why are these kids even allowed there? Um, according to Sama Korsen Neff of Human Rights Watch, there is a current law that states that a child can work for a uh, hire at any, on any size farm at age 12. And at age 14, they can work for hire without their parents' permission. So how come anyone isn't doing anything about this? On July 24, 2012, that's less than five years ago, the U.S. House of Representatives voted uh, on a bill that was designed to prevent the Department of Labor from even attempting to change the labor law regarding children in agriculture in the near future. With that being said, it seems as if we may not be able to end the cycle of fair labor within our lifetime, but we are certainly capable of creating a path for future generations to pick up exactly where we left off. And we can do so by shopping at local farmers markets um, where we can encourage the farmers and their business to thrive, establishing a business that will allow their children to also thrive, allowing them to not have to work unnecessary labor and having an access to an education. We can also shop for fair trade products, and what that means is that these are small-scale, democratically run, organized farmers. What that in turn means is that these farmers have a voice, they have a vote, they have an opinion, they have good working conditions, good working environments, they are ensured a stable income and a fair pay. If we, um, if we decide that we don't actively engage with this, that, and we don't issue the if we don't tackle the issue, the long-term effects can be very detrimental. The cycle of poverty is what drives these kids to wake up at 4.30 in the morning to help their parents. These kids often drop out of school and not able to finish a high school education. If you decide that you can do something about this, you're standing up for the kids who are forced to work in severely threatening conditions and who don't have the skills or resources to stand up for themselves. You're also taking a stand against the corporate companies who exploit these children for their financial benefit. Thomas Bullitt once said, when you are born poor, getting an education is the highest act of rebellion you can do against the system. These children have been oppressed long enough and I think it's time that they rebel. Only good things can happen when we keep these children's interests in mind. 
everybody is always saying the children are our future, and I think as much as that is true, we aren't doing very much to make sure that they have a future where they can have possibilities to change their their own actions and do something for themselves for a change. We are already leading the nation in many fields, and I think that we should also follow this continuous effect and say that we will no longer be idle and that we will no longer take a stand with the companies that who are exploiting these children. And I think that we can do so by purchasing um, you can do so by purchasing fair trade products and going to your local farmers markets. Two logos that I would recommend or completely stand by are the two on your uh, on your my right side. The first one is kind of a yin yang. It's an arm with the with the arm up, and then the second one is a woman with a basket. These are logos that I have endorsed with previous volunteer companies that I have worked with and have been on the fields firsthand and known that these. Organizations do something for the best interest of the children, and also you can. Um, I know we're in Newark, so the Newark Farmers Market is just down the street at Newark Mall. It's year round from nine to two, nine to one, seven to two, depending on the season. Um, it's not hard to make a change, and it's not too late to make a change. I think that these children have been taking care of us long enough, and I think it's time that we do the same for them. Thank you.